hi, Yvonne, aka Vogue Brunette here, and today we're making Roblox hair from scratch. Quick sidebar, this is just one way of doing it. Think of it like art class. Everyone's final project looks different. And that's the fun part. It's not rocket science. It's more like art science, hair science, whatever it is, it works. There are tons of methods out there. So do your research and find what clicks for you. This is just the method that worked well for the style I was going for. We'll go through modeling, texturing, and finally bringing it into studio so your avatar can actually wear it. Before we even start, here's what you'll need. Roblox Studio, Blender, Photoshop, or any image editor works. A few plugins and rigs. You can download these from the Roblox Learn or Inside Studio. Basic knowledge of Blender, Photoshop, and Studio. If you're thinking about selling your item, just know you'll need Robux for both the upload fee and publishing fee. My personal tip, don't rush into publishing right away. Start by making a few practice hair first get comfy, and then check out these other videos on how to actually start selling UGC and turning it into a little business. For my hair, I want something casual but still versatile. And since headbands are literally everywhere this fall, like they're having a moment, it feels perfect. Yes, it does mean we're adding an extra piece of geometry, but don't freak out. It's super simple, I promise. First, we start with adding a simple square mesh plane. Let's resize the plane to a rectangle, then apply a loop cut. The hotkey for this is Control and R, to cut it into five sections. In edit mode, switch to face select. Click on the middle rectangle and then hit O for proportional editing. Press G and move it up to that natural curve. If you want it to dip, press G and Z to slide it down. Basically, we're just shaping it. Now let's go back to edit mode. Press A to select everything and hit Alt or Option on Mac and E to extrude along the normals, AKA puff it up a little so it's not like totally flat. Finally, add a subdivision modifier with control and three, which is like giving it a smoothing filter. So your headband goes from blocky to slightly more realistic. And that's it. <laughs> now let's do the hair. Okay, so modeling hair breaks down into three general steps. This may look complicated, but once you get the hang of it, you can apply it to all different hair types and styles. Step one is creating the first strand. Step two is duplicating it and repositioning it. And then step three is optimizing and merging everything. So let's get started. First, we need to import a rig as our base. Then you need to import a reference photo of the hairstyle you want. Or if you're extra like me and you made a whole vision board, we can use that. Then we're gonna add a curved path. This lets you bend shapes into something more organic. Then we're gonna add a mesh plane. For this, you're gonna right click, merge vertices at center, drag one point in to form a triangle, go to curve and add a path. Then position the path on the top of your rig's head. Size it accordingly, and we're going to right click and convert the path to a curve. Select the entire mesh, right click and select convert to curve. In the right properties panel, navigate to the geometry section. Under bevel, select object. Then use the eyedropper tool to apply a bevel to your object. This makes your first 3D hair strand. Congrats! <laughs> We're gonna use S to scale, G to move, and right click to shade flat. This is just gonna make things easier to see as we go along. We're gonna adjust using Alt and S or Option and S on Mac. To change thickness, we're gonna use G and Control and T to move or tilt the points while in edit mode. This part is trial and error, so take time shaping your first strand until it feels right to you. Now that we've got our strand, we're gonna go back in object mode and use Shift and D to duplicate it. Move and rotate them until you build up volume or the desired look you want to achieve. Repeat this a bunch of times. P.S. Roblox won't accept hair that goes below the torso bounding box. No Rapunzel hair allowed in the front or the back. Now comes the part where we merge everything together and keep it clean. Convert the strands to mesh. In edit mode, merge using M. We're gonna loop select using Option or Alt on PC and Command or select on PC. Dissolve extra edges by right clicking and then selecting dissolve edges. We're gonna use G and G to loop slide. Now, if you're in a pickle, you can always add a loop to make merging easier 
if moving the loop doesn't work. Do not delete extra edges. It will mess up your design. But be careful to not make them too pixelated looking unless that's the style you're going for. Then slay on Mario. Edge loop trick time. Okay, so here's a trick to quickly dissolve some edges. This is going to cut the number of triangles per hair strand in half, saving us all of the triangles. We're gonna use control and option to select edges, not points. You might have to switch modes here. You can press two on the keyboard to quickly set to edge select. Deselect the very bottom or any unnecessary curves. Go to select, checker deselect, change offset to negative one, go to select, loops, edge loops. Right click, dissolve edges. All done. We're going to have one final merge check by distance to make sure we didn't forget to merge anything. We're going to press M, Again, look at the bottom pop up and adjust. Clean up sliding edges with G and G if needed. We're gonna check the face orientation. This is very important. We're gonna turn on viewport overlays, face orientation, go to edit mode, press A to select all, press option and N and recalculate outside. Now our hair mesh is merged, cleaned and optimized under the 4K triangle limit. If you're new here, hello, we need to stay under 4K triangles per Roblox's upload rules. You can check the triangle count of your selection by going in the viewport overlay options of your 3D export, select statistics. Statistics now is in the top left of your viewport of the item you're actively selecting. And we have a hair and we have a headband. Now now, all we have to do is color it. Texturing hair. Here's the plan. Because in Blender, nothing is as simple as it seems, we're going to split the texturing process into three stages. Texturing the hair, texturing the headband, and combining the textures of the hair and the headband onto a single texture map. P.S. Before starting any UV unwrapping of the sort or joining your fabulous hair with your headband, apply modifiers in the designated order. Remember, this is the point of no return. So save that file as a new name or do whatever you gotta do. Texturing the hair. We're gonna open Photoshop or your editor of choice. Create a base with black, white, and gray lines. We're gonna use Gaussian blur for softness, and we're gonna multiply this by a thousand. Or shortcut, grab strand lines from another texture, recolor them, and fade with layers until it looks like realistic strands. Okay, then we're going to save it as a PNG. We'll need to modify this file later, so keep Photoshop open just in case. This is an optional step because if you're not doing a headband, then you don't really need to do some of the steps in this tutorial. So imagine if you're not doing a headband, this is all you have to do. Go to the shading tab, press Shift and A, add image texture, open your PNG. If the orientation looks off, go to UV editing, press A to select all and rotate to adjust and you're done. This step is also optional if you want to have multiple hair colors. You will need to add a new material. You duplicated the object, but you didn't make a different material. Click the number next to the material name to make a single user copy. This will allow you to have different materials assigned to each object. To actually make the material in Photoshop or using Adobe Express faster, you can just drop in your original material and change the tone, brightness, contrast, etc. until you've reached the color you want. Ta-da! For the headband, I wanted a classic velvety look. So I did the lazy thing and went to find a copyright free image on Adobe Photostock to use. Or you could go crazy in Photoshop if you're a pro artist and create your own. My art skills uh, don't pay those bills yet. Roblox expects a single texture image for a model. And right now we have two, one for the hair and one for the headband. So we need to combine or bake these textures together. While you have a few options to bake textures into a single image, one of the easiest ways to do this is manually with Blender and Photoshop. First, we're gonna to modify the UV map of your hair to make some space for the headband UV. Next, we're going to modify the UV map of our headband to make reference of a small section at the bottom of our hair texture image. Make sure it doesn't overlap with the hair UV. In object mode, click the headband, then shift click the hair and right click join to combine the objects. Order of clicking matters here. In Photoshop, we're going to add the headband texture to the image in the same area where we assign the headband UVs. It might be helpful to take a screen capture of your UV layout so you know exactly where you can put the headband texture color. And finally, assign the new image we made to the materials. Click on the combined hair and headband object in Blender. In the materials properties, remove both of the assigned materials, add a new one, and base color add a new image texture. Use the new image texture we created in Photoshop. And now your hair and headband should look textured, dimensional 
and ready for export. So the next step is going to be exporting from Blender and importing into Roblox Studio as a wearable accessory. To export from Blender, we're going to select the hair mesh. The headband should be combined at this point. File, external data, pack resources, this saves your texture, export as FBX, check apply unit scale to FBX unit scale, name it, export. To import to Studio, we're going to go in Studio, File, select FBX, Import. If texture didn't load, manually assign it in the Texture ID property. To convert to Accessory, we're going to go in the Avatar tab. Click Accessory, open Accessory Fitting Tool, select Imported Model, set Accessory Type to Hair. We're going to adjust the placement on the Mannequin Preview. You do not want to trust the blue box. We're just going to completely ignore it. We're going to press Generate Mesh Part Accessory. And boom, your custom hair is officially living in Studio. If you want to take it all the way to the Roblox Marketplace, just right click the item, hit save to Roblox, set the content type to avatar item, and the asset category to hair. Give it a cute name, write a little description, and Roblox will validate it almost instantly. Then you can smash that submit button for the Roblox upload fee in the Marketplace. But don't forget, once it actually hits the Marketplace, there's a Robux publishing fee waiting for you. And that's the full process. From Blender to Studio, now you've got a Roblox ready hair mesh that you made yourself. If you survive this, you deserve a medal. We are all now earning our PhDs as 3D modelers. I'm proud of us. Happy building.